Okay, so our topic for today are enzymes. Okay, so a question here. Um, what causes browning in fruits? So since our topic is enzymes, the browning in fruits is actually caused by an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase. Okay, so in the presence of oxygen, it reacts or metabolizes different chemical reactions and that produces brown pigments in as a result. Okay, so that's an example of an enzyme that we can find in our environment, in our surroundings. In our body also, we have a lot of enzymes. Okay, so orga enzymes are organic substances. They are actually proteins that accelerate the rate of chemical reaction. So they are proteins that um, that catalyze reactions in general. Catalyze means uh, pinapabilis niya or hinihasen niya yung chemical reaction. Okay, mamaya, we will know how the enzyme does this. Okay? Okay, so here we have... Um, an apple which is genetically modified to have an, to have the polyphenol oxidase or the enzyme to be defective. That's why the apple hindi siya nagba-brown kagad-kagad when it is peeled or it is cut. Okay, so the Arctic apple is an example of a genetically modified um, organism or a genetically modified uh, plant or fruit which has a defective polyphenol oxidase. So, uh, tinarget natin yung enzyme in order to negate its activity or effect. Okay, so pwede naman din yun in terms of medical treatments, in terms of industrial applications, pwede din natin gawin yun. So, is the hydrolysis of starch to maltose? Okay, a spontaneous reaction. So, hydrolysis is basically the process of breaking down the starch into its components, including maltose. So, um, that reaction ba of breaking down the starch is a spontaneous reaction? So the answer is? So it is a spontaneous reaction. Okay? So the reactants have higher levels of free energy. So mas mataas yung free energy niya compared to the product. So if we show this in a graph, the graph would uh, be presented like this one. So you have here the reactants, which has a lot more free energy as compared to the products, okay? With a, which has a, a lesser, um, lesser free energy, okay? But take note, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. But take note that there is what we call an activation energy. Okay, what is the activation energy? So this is the energy needed in order for the reaction to proceed. Okay, it is the energy needed in order to, um, in order to make the reaction a spontaneous one talaga. Okay, so if you notice the red line here without the enzyme, in order to create the product from the reactants, you would need a significant amount of activation energy. So this is the amount of energy that you need to reach in order for the reaction to proceed smoothly or spontaneously. Okay, and that is without an enzyme. So um, what the enzyme does to catalyze reactions is actually lower the activation energy. So in order for the reaction to proceed smoothly or spontaneously or easily, what the enzyme does is lower this activation energy para kahit sa environment lang or kahit sa regular cellular environment lang, the, re the process or the procedure or the, um, what do you call this, metabolism can proceed spontaneously and smoothly. Kasi if you compare the activation energy without the enzyme versus activation energy without the e with an enzyme, you can see that there is a significant difference between the two. So this is a lot lower than the activation energy without the enzyme. Okay? So this is where um, the enzyme actually does its magic. Kumbaga. It doesn't necessarily like make the molecules faster, but instead it lowers the activation energy for the process or for the metabolism to occur. Okay, kasi this activation energy, it can be gained through the environment. 
The problem is, if it is without an enzyme, it would take a lot of heat or it would take a lot of time and heat in order for that activation energy to um, be reached by the molecules in order for that um, process, for, or for that metabolism to occur. Okay, so dahil may enzyme naman or with the enzyme cell, what it does is lower this activation energy. So kahit na nasa regular cellular environment lang siya, kahit hindi sobrang init, kaya mag-proceed no um, process, kaya mag-proceed no metabolism smoothly. Okay? Again, without the enzyme, it would need a, it would need a lot of heat. And kung masyado mataas yung heat, mamamatay din yung cell. Okay, proteins will be denatured. Some um, processes will stop occurring or will stop um, <coughs> happening. Okay, so the cell would eventually die. Kahil, dahil sa mataas ng heat. So paano mo gagawa ng paraan yun? Na mag-proceed pa rin yung process o yung metabolism without sacrificing the integrity of the cell or yung life ng cell, you do this using enzymes. Okay? So, pababain natin activation energy. Okay. So, ito yung tinutukoy ko. Um, a sterile starch solution, although, di ba, binanggit natin that a starch, uh, a starch hydrolyzing to maltose is a spontaneous reaction it would need a lot of um, activation energy. That's why kapag nag-iwan ka na starch lang dyan sa table nyo, it would, not, um, it would not proceed to break down into its components like maltose. Okay? Kasi the activation energy is higher dahil wala namang enzyme na present dun sa starch solution nyo. But if you introduce an enzyme such as an amylase, for example, this would then proceed to hydrolyzing the starch into its components like maltose. Okay, with the presence of the enzyme, the starch solution will then start to um, hydrolyze. Okay, magsisimula yung pag-hydrolyze ng starch natin. Okay. Okay, like I said, a lot of chemical reactions, a lot of chemical processes, metaboli uh, metabolism, these are um, done through the help of enzymes. Okay, these are done through the help of enzymes, as well as, of course, the regulation of genetic material. Why? Because um, if enzymes are essentially proteins, then it follows what we call the central dogma of molecular biology. Diba? It undergoes the before it produces proteins, it will undergo replication, transcription, and then translation. Ultimately, building the amino acid sequence for the primary structure of the protein. Okay, It would build the founding or the uh, base structure for our future enzyme. So that's why the regulation of genetic material is also included here. It is also noted here. Okay. So again, enzymes are proteins. Okay, We call them proteins. They are catalysts. These are substances that speed up reaction. And please take note that they are not consumed or destroyed during this reaction. They simply um, lower the activation energy. They simply catalyze the reaction and then proceed to catalyze another molecule or catalyze another compound. Okay, hindi siya nakoconsume dun sa reaction. So, the enzyme essentially can act, can act upon multiple compounds or multiple molecules in a given time. Okay, kaya nga meron ding rate ng activity ng enzyme. You can also compute for the rate of the activity of an enzyme. Okay, they are vital to the regulation of metabolic processes and many enzymes are protein. So, sinabing many because there are actually some enzymes which are made up of RNA. So that sometimes, okay, it's an exemption. Okay, so what are the parts? So the parts of an enzyme is the enzyme proper here, the gray one, it is called the apoenzyme. Okay, so this is called the apoenzyme. Apoenzyme, apoenzyme plus the cofactor cofactor or coenzyme would be equal to the holoenzyme okay so i hope you got this so basically 
the holoenzyme is the whole enzyme, including it, the cofactor and the coenzyme. Okay, so what are the two? So cofactor and coenzymes, they are um, additional, okay, they are additional molecules included in the enzyme for it to for it to function efficiently. Kasi yung, kung yung apo enzyme lang mismo, may hirapan talaga siya mag-function efficiently. And a lot of our enzymes in the body or a lot of enzymes in our cells, they include uh, either a coenzyme or a cofactor or both. Okay? Sometimes they include both. I forgot which of the one is organic and which is inorganic. But so basically, one of, this, one of the co- Factors or coenzyme is organic. I forgot which one. So you can just search for that. Okay? So, um, aquaenzyme plus these coenzyme and cofactors, they both make up what we call the holoenzyme or the whole enzyme itself. Okay? So there are still other parts. For example, this is the active site or the catalytic site. The active site or the catalytic site is where the substrate would attach to. Okay? The substrate is... Um, the molecule or the compound which is um, how do you call this compatible for the enzyme okay kasi not all substrates can be processed by the enzyme and not all enzymes can metabolize or catalyze reactions they have a certain reaction that they capitalize uh, no sorry they have a certain reaction that they catalyze sorry okay they have a certain reaction that they catalyze so if they Catalyze redox reactions, certain compounds lang din yung pwede nila kuhanin, hindi lahat. Okay? If they break down things, if an enzyme break down, break down things, more, um, kumbaga, if, a break, uh, if an enzyme break down, breaks down things, doon siya nakaspecify talaga. Ibig sabihin, kapag may kailangan i-build up na structure or na compound, hindi yun yung enzyme na kailangan natin. Okay, so specific, very specific ang mga enzymes natin. That's why they also have specific substrates. Okay, for example, yung dun sa starch amylase, okay, can be one enzyme that can hydrolyze the starch. There are also other enzymes pa which can hydrolyze the starch, but they have specific actions, they have specific um, rates then of reaction. So iba-iba lang din sila na uh, mga katangian. Okay? Pero mas specific pa talaga sila. Okay? Okay. So an enzyme action, basically, um, it's either the enzyme breaks a bond or actually forms a bond. Okay? Pwedeng... It, you can divide the activity of an enzyme into two. Pwedeng catabolic siya or uh, destroying or anabolic which is building. Okay? Pwedeng, ganun, pwedeng doon natin i-categorize yung action ng enzyme. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, before an enzyme actually um, catalyzes the reaction or before it... Mm, how do you say this? before the reaction would proceed spontaneously, what the enzyme does also is to um, take note, contort the substrate into a highly unstable state. Okay? Basta it, the enzyme needs to um, uh, contort or move the molecule or the compound or the substrate na lang. Sige, let's call it the substrate. So it needs to contort the substrate into a highly unstable state. Okay? So, in order for the reaction to proceed, kailangan niya gawin yun para po, if, it's, uh, if it takes, um, if it needs to break down a bond or it needs to build the bond, build a bond, it would be easier. Okay? And this, and this, transi and this unstable state is called as the transition state. Okay? So, it's called the transition state. So, before the reaction proceeds, so at the peak of the, the graph, um, the molecule would have um, a highly unstable state. Okay, it would be in in the most unstable state. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, like I said, 
the transition state, this is where the molecules would have the most unstable um, conformation or most unstable um, position. Diba? So before the enzyme or before the reaction proceeds smoothly, the molecules or the substrate would be subjected to the transition state. Okay? Tapos tsaka pa lang bababa yung reaction smoothly. Okay? So spontaneous reaction. Okay? Okay. So dito kasi dinidescribe mostly is for um, catabolic. Ano? So nag-aabsorb ng heat and like I said, since mababa na yung activation energy, it would uh, yung pag-absorb nyo ng heat kahit hindi na ganun kalaki. Okay, so absorb heat and like we said last time, di ba? Or like we discussed in the past, heat or temperature is simply a measure of the movement of these molecules, di ba? The, the, temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of molecules. So basically, if a molecule absorbs heat, it increases its temperature, therefore increasing its movement or its kinetic energy. Okay, so if it moves more frequently, it 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 has a likely chance of breaking bonds. Okay. 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 So how do enzymes affect reactions? It says here heat speeds up reactions. So like I said last time, okay, sana. The problem is a lot of our biological molecules, our systems, um, they die because of high heat. That's why if we lower the activation energy, it would need um, a lower uh, range of heat or temperature. It would need a lower range of temperature. Therefore, um, the procedure can proceed smoothly without um, endangering the biological molecules in the cell. Okay? Okay, let's just repeat the parts of the enzyme. So again, cofactor plus the coenzyme plus the apoenzyme would make up the holo enzyme. Okay, the apoenzyme itself is the enzyme na um uh, it's the like the base structure of the enzyme, but it would not function efficiently or would not function at all without the cofactor or the coenzyme or both of them. Okay? In order for it to become um, really efficient and functioning, it needs those two para holo enzyme na siya, buong enzyme na talaga siya. Okay? Like I said, the substrate is the compound na target ng enzyme. And it is specific for each enzyme. So, an enzyme can act upon um, several substrates, okay, several substrates, as long as yung reaction na nag-undergo or need na i-undergo ng mga substrates na yun ay similar. Okay, so kung hydrolysation man or hydrolysis, sorry, if hydrolysis man yung process na ina-undergo nung um, different na substrates na yun, for example, starch, tapos cellulose, kunyari, okay? So, although, ano sila, magkaiba silang substrate, um, Pero same naman yung process na pag-breakdown sa kanila, pwede yung enzyme natin magawa niya yun sa dalawang substrates na yun. Okay? Pero the problem is um, minsan, hindi ganun ka-effective sa isang substrate, mas effective siya dun sa isa. Okay? So, may iba pa tayong parts. Okay? For example, um, this, uh, this part right here, yung ina-attachan ng non-competitive inhibitor, yung ina-attachan niya, is what we call allosteric site. Okay? The allosteric site, it is different from the active site. The active site is where the substrate attaches to the enzyme. While the allosteric site, it is the site where non-competitive inhibitor attaches. So ano ba yung non-competitive inhibitor? Okay, so we, we have two types of inhibition. Competitive and non-competitive. Kapag competitive, ibig sabihin mag introduce ka ng isang substrate uh, or isang compound na similar dun sa substrate nyo. Okay? So, similar. Bakit similar, sir? Kasi po, kailangan similar siya para mag-attach sila, mag-attach doon sa active site. 
anong magagawa ba ng competitive inhibitor? Ibig sabihin, may kakompetensya na yung substrate sa active site ng enzyme. May kaagaw na siya. So yun yung competitive, kaya sa tinerm na competitive. Kaya kailangan similar yung competitive inhibitor mo dun sa substrate para mag-compete siya dun sa active site ng enzyme. Anong mangyayari kapag nag-compete yung competitive inhibitor dun sa active site? Okay, so simple logic lang po. So kung sa isang solution, meron ka nung substrate mo, kunyari 5 grams ng substrate mo, tapos meron kang 5 grams din ng, ano mo, ng competitive inhibitor mo, tapos may isang enzyme ka lang. So the chances are that the substrate would attach to the active site of the enzyme would be 50%. Okay? It may have chance na na mag-attach siya, may have chance na hindi. Kasi meron ka ng competitive inhibitor. Pero if competitive inhibitor is absent, 100% chance that the substrate would attach to the enzyme. Okay? Ganun lang po kasimple. Nag-introduce ka ng kakompetensya nung, nung substrate dun sa um, enzyme natin. How about non-competitive inhibitor? The non-competitive inhibitor naman, Um, hindi siya nag-a-attach doon sa active site. Nag-a-attach siya sa allosteric site. Ngayon, ano nangyayari? So, if you can notice, kapag nag-attach yung non-competitive inhibitor sa allosteric site, nagbabago yung active site no enzyme. Pag nagbago yung active site ng enzyme, hindi na makaka-attach si substrate. So, walang reaction na mangyayari. Walang metabolism na mangyayari. Ganun po yung nangyayari sa non-competitive inhibitor. Okay? So, sa non-competitive sa allosteric site. Okay? Okay. So, we have two um, models na nagtatry i-depict yung pag-attach ng substrate sa enzyme. Okay? Can you confirm Can you guys confirm if nabanggit ba yung induced fit sa mo, sa module na nito, yung sa components of enzyme? Kasi may nakita akong lock and key doon, pero hindi ko na notice if there are uh, if there was something na nag-introduce sa induced fit. Meron po ba? Pwede po bang paki-check if ano? Or kung nabasa niyo na baka alam niyo kung merong induced fit. Meron po ba? Okay. How about sa iba? Sabi ni Dana, wala daw. How about sa iba? Baka maano, ma no? Pacheck lang. Okay. Sige, pacheck ha. Nasa questions lang. O, oh, bakit nasa questions lang? Okay, anyway. Okay. So, yung lumang model na nag, na nag ah, ano doon, na nag, na nag de describe doon, nakikita nyo yun sa, makikita nyo sa module, yun yung lock and key. Okay, pero ito yung luma na to, hindi na ito yung accepted. Ang accepted na natin ngayon is yung induced fit. Okay? Sa lock and key kasi, sobrang specific talaga yung substrate sa enzyme. Meaning, talaga siyang lock and key talaga siya. There is a specific key for the enzyme. Kung baga, there is a specific substrate for the enzyme. May figure na parang induced fit sa... Wick? Ano yung wick? May figure lang? Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Sige. So, kung yun man, baka yun na yung tinutukoy nila doon. Anyway. So, sa lock and key, like I said, specific lang. Okay? So, kung may isang substrate ka, meron ka ding isang enzyme. Okay? Ganun siya kasimple. Parang tigi-isa lang talaga siya. Ano yung nagiging struggle ngayon dito? Kasi may mga enzymes nga tayo na kaya niya mag-act upon sa several substrates. Kaya niyang mag-act upon sa several substrates. Ah, gaya ng sinabi ko, ang pwedeng maging difference lang is hindi efficient. Okay? Pwedeng hindi efficient. Pwedeng hindi ganun ka-effective. Pero kaya niya pa rin gawin or kaya niya pa rin mag-proceed dun sa metabolism. Hindi nga lang ganun ka-efficient compared kung ibang enzyme siguro yung mag-act um, upon dun sa substrate. Okay, dito sa induced fit, ito yung mas um, mas tanggap na ngayon because yung active site natin mismo, hindi talaga siya perfect para dun sa substrate. Medyo hindi talaga siya ganun ka-fit. Ano yung nangyayari? Ngayon, once the substrate attaches to the active site, okay, 
nag-attach siya, nag-bind siya, kahit several points lang, for example, dito sa taas at sa baba lang siya mag-attach. Ang mangyayari dun sa enzyme, ang mangyayari dun sa protein is magbabago siya ng tinatawag nating conformation. Okay? Paki-search ko ano yung conformation kasi hindi ako sure sa specific na um na description niya. Pero basically speaking kasi sa pagkakaintindi ko, yung protein ay magbabago ng shape. Okay? Magbabago siya ng shape. Ia-accommodate niya yung substrate ngayon. Okay? So although hindi talaga originally fit Okay, hindi talaga originally fit or sakto yung enzyme ay yung substrate dun sa active site ng enzyme. Ang nangyayari is yung enzyme, ginagawa niya ng paraan. Kumbaga, um, it will change its conformation in order to um, facilitate the process or facilitate the metabolism. So kung makanonotice nyo, nagbago ngayon yung pag-fit ng en- substrate dun sa enzyme kasi nagkaroon ka ng induced fit. Okay, kumbaga um sinadya na talaga ng enzyme na magfit yung substrate sa kanya. Okay? Pero there are still exemptions, okay? Hindi pa rin lahat ng substrates ay kayang i-induce fit ng enzyme. Baka isipin niyo kasi kahit anong substrate na lang, hindi pa rin po. Okay? There are still a range of substrates na kayang i-act upon nung enzyme. Okay? Paano ba natin nasasabi ito or paano natin sila ma-i-categorize? So for example, hydrolysis is one process na very common sa mga carbohydrates. Okay? So if an enzyme um, catalyzes hydrolysis, most probably a lot of polysaccharides, yung mga mahahabang carbohydrates, ay kaya nilang i-metabolize or kaya nilang i-catalyze yung reaction. Okay, so parang ganun yung idea natin. Okay, so are there any questions? Wait, wait, let me stop recording.